Hi, Paul Slack is good news. This is really good news. I'll tell you that. And this has been good news for a long time for me and the, my good friend, Christina Fontanelli. Hi, how are you? Hi, Paul. Hi, everybody at the Good News Broadcasting. It's great to be here with you. It's always great to get a chance to share your talents, your kindness, and uh, your loving spirit for the world. You're award-winning singer, PBS TV host, and you have your 19th oh. <laughs> Christmas in <laughs> Italy. You have to even register that name because you've done it so many times yeah. that you deserve to own it. Um, and you have, it's coming up, and it's the uh, on Saturday, December 17th. Uh, 2022, 2.30 in the afternoon to 7.30. So this is not uh, a 15-minute show, it's right? And 7.30. We oh, actually, sorry. <laughs> yeah. it's all right. Other people thought the same thing. That would be <laughs> really a marathon. We, uh, That's we the kind of shows I put on. 7.30, I yes. put on a long one. The Bruno Walter Auditorium for the Performing Arts at Lincoln Center. New York, 10013, if you're driving in. 40, actually, they have some parking in that area over there, some lots and things. 40 Lincoln Center Plaza, Lincoln Center. How nice uh, can it be? Street entrance, 65th Street. It's a 501c3 concert. So this is through your foundation, I believe. It is. And in a pre preserving the songs of Italy in Christmas while giving youth and then children performance opportunities, raising fun for children's causes. All right. You are such a mensch. I got to give you a Jewish word. I love that word. <laughs> I, Yiddish. I actually sing in Yiddish from my early days. I, I remember that. Well, you can sing in about 700 languages. Uh, <laughs> I remember yeah. that also. So tell us what are you going to do there and uh, how people can get involved and, and what you should be telling Okay, well, first yeah. of all, thank you so much for this opportunity, Paul, because I admire you so much. You know, in a world of chaos and craziness and crazy news, you keep going with this good news. And there really is good news, but, you know, everyone says, oh, nobody wants to hear it. Yes, we do want to hear it. So thank you. <laughs> we need to hear good news, you know. And um, so this is I started a, my own foundation because. I've been doing this for 18 years. Now it's 19. And I said, well, all roads lead to Rome. I'm doing this. And I produce other things like in the Hamptons and, and in the springtime international programming. And I, my goal was always to involve children and youth and to give them performance opportunities and help. And in this original case, Christmas in Italy, which I actually did trademark the title because people would, taking the title on sometimes they didn't know but it's such a specific show and i didn't want people to get confused because we had that at one point a confusion but anyway so i started out just to preserve the great songs of italy and i said oh well then how when should we do this well of course christmas what's better than christmas and then everyone could come with their family their grandmothers their aunts their uncles the kids and that's exactly what has happened that's exactly what has happened. We've had generations of audience members through the years that their kids grew up. And we have one young boy, Anthony Matson, who he actually is not as young. He started at seven in our choir. And now he's 17 and he's applying for these incredible music conservatories, even in London. And um, Anthony has performed every year since he's seven years old in our choir and then as a soloist in 2020, 2021. Um, and now he'll join us at Lincoln Center. And then we're gonna scoot him off to college, to a music conservatory. Well, he just needs to walk. See, you make life so easy. Why doesn't he just walk up to the street, to the corner of Juilliard and tell him to knock on the door and go there? <laughs> well, I don't know why didn't you, maybe I don't know about Juilliard, but you know, I found Anthony, believe it or not, in the streets of Little Italy. <laughs> right? I love all these stories. You know, they're really grassroots. His mama is very dedicated. And I saw this little kid. He must have been, if he was seven when he joined us, he must have been six. I don't know. He was standing in the street with a little hat like Frank Sinatra, like a whatever Frank Sinatra used to wear, singing these Sinatra songs. 
Really? And I said, you know, there's a future talent for our program. <laughs> and what do you know? The next thing you know, here he is. He's 17 and he's going off to. Uh, this is a great story. This is that's beautiful. a great story. I want to interview him. I love it. You know, that's my kind of story. I, I yeah. interviewed street musicians, subway musicians, all these entertainers. And the bottom line is that they're as good as anybody else because everybody is good in their own way. And well, you know, I, like I, I have found, Paul, that there are people that are really naturally gifted. Uh, they're a natural, you know, like these little kids. Like one year we have a, a postcard picture of this little boy dressed as an elf. It was at Carnegie Hall and he was part of the kids. So the, the encore is always Oh Sole Mio. For your audience, that means You Are My Sunshine. That was my mother Francesca's favorite song. It's a famous uh, Italian song. So I start singing the encore. And the next thing you know, this little peanut, you know, in the elf costume, starts singing at the top of his lungs. Oh, holy me. And I, I, I loved it. See, other people might get thrown off, but not me. I love when stuff like that happens. And this kid was just stealing the whole show. So what I'm saying is I find that they're little spirits, you know, they're naturals and they come out, they're pure, you know, and they're sometimes they're really showstoppers without any lessons at all. You know, they just know they just have it. They're naturals. But the showstopper happens to be on the screen here right now. And I can attest to that because you really are talented. This is the beautiful, a beautiful miracle that you were gifted with. And you share it in such a lovely way. And your shows are such a happy. If you don't walk out of uh, uh, your show, Christina, I'm down this show, happier than when you came in, then you didn't go to the show. <laughs> you slept. It's really, I have to say, it's hard sometimes for me to even compliment myself or anything. But that is the truth. I know people just love it. As a matter of fact, they have called it Christina Fontelli's Christmas Party. Oh, Even yeah. though it's like two hours worth of great music, it's a Christmas party, you know, so. So give us some song. What songs are you going to sing? Well, we have our, uh, for, the first part is always about Italian music, which is um, great songs. Uh, I'm trying to think, we, we include Bocelli songs because that's become part of the Italian repertoire now. Time to say goodbye. And we have a special tribute, the prayer. It'll be beautiful. Um Ave Maria and the Neapolitan songs. We have mandolins. We have the mandolins, the accordion for real old time, pure, the way they were written. Neapolitan songs straight from Naples. Then we have, um, well, I can't do it. 19 years. Mama, my own mama. Oh, you love your mama. Uh, this mama song, uh, your Cavell, you, you like. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, my mama, Francesca Anna mm -hmm. de Candia Fontanelli, is now in Paradiso with who I, you know, I love Jesus. And I just think she's dancing up there because I felt her spirit when she passed. I did. I really did. And uh, I was just happy. I, I was sad to miss her, but I was happy for her. And um, but she's still I always say if I don't sing O Solo Mio, her favorite song, I, she's going to send the whatever. What do you call that? The Italian. <laughs> That's, yeah, that's the Italian high sign. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said, I have to sing on Sole Mio, otherwise I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. So it's part of the tradition, you know? Yes. All right. Well, then there's a Christmas song or two. And how do those go? Uh, what are you going to sing? Well, about? we always have, you know, to, uh, White Christmas. To Shendi Dalle Stelle is the Italian Christmas carol, the traditional carol. We have Xavier high school the middle school coming to sing that the kids are from six to eight grade we have um dominic the donkey of course i insist on that the kids from staten island the dream studio for the performing arts will dance to dominic the donkey and um there's other surprises you know I, I, which maybe i can actually share with you because the truth is we're almost sold out completely and i'm I'm, I'm glad and I'm sad. It's like two weeks away and I, I don't like turning anyone away, you know, but I, I love to talk about the show because next year will be 20 years and we'll probably go back to Carnegie Hall next year.
Yeah, you need bigger space. Do you want me to go down? I can knock the walls down a little if you want. I can. Well, it's down the street from me. I live close to Lincoln Center. And we knock the walls down. We put some chairs in. You get you some more people in there. Uh, <laughs> well, well, we love people. That's for sure. That's for sure. That's a beautiful thing. All right. Well, this is uh, any other update you want to share? Any other events that people should know about? Well, you know, I really wish that they would sign up. Why don't they go to my website, info at ChristinaFontanelli.com, um, if they will, and sign up because we have the performances in the summer, Opera and Broadway of the Hamptons, at Duckwalk Vineyard on the North Fork in Southampton at the Basilica Church, sometimes at Guildhall in the Hamptons. Every year I perform at 54 Below, which is always a blast because it's the top Broadway nightclub in New York, Suffolk Club. And I get to really let my hair down, as they say. I sing Sinatra. I sing, you know, all the fun, fun stuff. And, um, you know, we just love to stay in touch. And as far as my foundation goes, the mission statement includes producing mm -hmm. these family-friendly productions, giving children and youth performance opportunities on great stages and with world-class talent. But the main thing I'm gearing for and super important is to raise awareness of the scientifically proven healing benefits of this mm -hmm. music and the arts because we are so missing the boat. We are total. it's organic. Mm -hmm. It's just like when you eat organic food instead of the chemically laden horror nightmare that people eat sometimes today, you know, and the kids are off the walls and they don't know why and the chemicals, you know. <laughs> So this music has been scientifically proven to lower people's cholesterol, their blood pressure. It lowers the crime rate. It helps children learn better. Um, there, And I'll send, say one more experiment that people should know about. His name is Dr. Emoto, the Japanese scientist that did experiments with water. Human beings are more than 60% water, as you probably know. And he did an experiment if you play classical music into water, if you speak loving, kind words, just like they say plants grow better, yes, they're f formed uh, crystals like snowflake, perfect snowflake-like crystals form in the water. You can watch it on YouTube. You can actually see it. If you play the ugly, violent rap music, rock metal music, if you say insults, I hate you, I'm going to kill you, you're ugly. The snowflakes are distorted right in front of your very eyes. So this whole narrative about, oh, the media doesn't affect people. You know, they're not going out and shooting people because of violence. In the, that is not correct, in my opinion. And not only in my opinion, look at the facts. So it is disturbing the... Uh, ecosystem of the human being, actually, and therefore the whole world. And that is what my foundation, I hope to progress a lot in that area to to speak uh, about. This. Uh, you know, the, you're, you're speaking actually to the choir here, Reverend Paul Slager. So, but you're uh, uh, additionally, you, you know, I'm a motos on good news. I've interviewed him a few times. Oh, have you Paul? Even possibly One... saved, saved his life. Uh, at really? One uh when he had potentially gangrene in his leg and so oh. he was in my office he was having problems whatever happened but uh, i sent him to somebody and they uh, helped him and uh, wow. so uh i know and you know water for us actually is a big subject matter we do world water day we helped it with the united nations yes. so yeah. that's a big thing now in addition i did the brain series many many years ago at channel 13 our pbs station uh, right. Two years of my life I spent on that, and one of the the one of the opening shows we started off with Michael Tilson Thomas, the uh, the orchestra leader at the San Francisco Symphony, and we proved how uh, 110 people by the by a baton goes up and a baton comes down and 110 people play all at one time. It's a phenomenon. So the brain is definitely uh, affected. Uh, by the sound of music, the sound of movement, the, the uh, appearance of movement. Uh, I, uh, Beethoven's Anvil by another famous Dan Goldman, on, uh, author in uh, Harvard, well known. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, I'm a musician too. So uh, yes. 
uh, I, uh, I'm a hundred percent believer. I know after a half an hour playing the piano that my heart rate has slowed up. I've calmed down. And uh, so I'm on, of course, your same page. So uh, we got to do a gig together. I gotta... Yeah, maybe we should collab. You know, like speak about how we can push that out into. Mm -hmm. It's already been done, as you mentioned. Right. There really, has been but it's very, stuff. very important. It hasn't become, you know. Great. Yeah. Great stuff. Last question: What is peace for you? You know, what is peace? Um, no, that's an easy one for me, actually, because I'm just going to say God. That's it. No other word could actually peace of god it's perfect perfect right. i can accept that i think that's a wonderful uh, uh thought no doubt about it and i'm a believer all right best of luck i look forward to seeing you soon keep up the great work and the important work because you make people happy and that's thank a, you that's a gift thank you and i hope we see some of your listeners at lincoln center on december 17th that would be lovely at 2 30 and, and 7 30. And you too, Paul. You let us know. Okay, I will. All right. Thank you. Bye bye now. Mwah.